President James Garfield was only noteworthy because of the way he died. He served only 199 days in office. The only term shorter was that of William Henry Harrison, who caught pneumonia on the day of his inauguration. I'm Nancy Toms. I'm a historian at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. On the morning of July 2nd, 1881, President Garfield walked into the Washington, D.C. train station. In this day and age, there was no secret service, so it was very easy for Charles Gateau to walk right up to the president's back and to shoot him with quite a large revolver. The president fell to the floor of the train station. He'd been shot, grazed in the arm, but the worst wound was the shot to the back. Just a few months after Garfield died, a committee was formed in Philadelphia by the Fairmont Park Art Association to erect a monument to his memory. This is John Dreifout, former superintendent of the Augustus St. Gaudens Historic Site. The committee in Philadelphia gathered together enough funds to contract with Augustus St. Gaudens. He had already achieved a reputation for major monuments. In fact, he was working on a major monument to Abraham Lincoln at the time that the Philadelphia Committee approached him. Lincoln's assassination had set a precedent for an outpouring of emotion and a ritual display of grief. He saved the Union. And Garfield saved nothing. Oh, How do we remember a president who wasn't memorable who didn't have enough time to do anything memorable. St. Gordon's worked on this piece for quite a long time, at least 10 years. During that period of time, the committee, of course, went through various stages of irateness, concern that their piece was never going to be finished. There's one particular instance in which St. Gordon's was writing to his friend, Dear Stan, I am dealing with a committee now with whom I am not on very pleasant terms. It would take me a week of Sundays to explain to them that the monument would be finer than the watercolor. The bust that we're looking at now of Garfield was done from a death mask. This is Frank Bender. Yeah, from Philadelphia. I'm a painter, sculptor, and I also do forensic art. The death mask is a big help for a sculptor because it gives you the exact size of the individual's head proportions and everything. Making a death mask is taking the body and pouring plaster over the face. His hair would have had to been heavily greased or vaseline, including his eyelashes. Then uh, the plaster would be put over Garfield's actual face. The president, of course, is represented by the bust, but um, I think it's important to point out the figure of the republic. The female figure in front. It's accessible. It's not on a 20-foot pedestal. This figure represents the nation, if you will, because the nation was what was harmed by this destructive thing that happened, this assassination. Garfield's assassination forced Americans to think about the office of the presidency. Imagine for a moment that no monument had been erected to Garfield, that he'd been dismissed as insignificant. That would have been an insult to the presidency. 